Uh, in five short years, my next guest has gone from a relatively unknown 16-year-old to this country's most decorated Olympian ever. Like forever, ever. And she's 21 years old. Penny Alexiak grew up in Toronto as the youngest of five children, but I think that's the only time she has ever come last. In fact, her story is full of firsts. She first burst onto the scene in the Rio Olympics 2016 where she won four medals, setting one Olympic record and five Canadian records. She won Canada's first medal of the Games and became the first Canadian to win a medal in each of the first two days of the Olympics. The first athlete born in the 2000s to win an individual gold. The first Canadian to win four medals at one Olympics and she followed that up with three medals this summer in Tokyo once again winning Canada's first medal of the Games and becoming the first Canadian ever to win seven Olympic medals. All this at 21. Safe to say she's still got plenty of firsts ahead of her. And while it pales in comparison, of course, to the other firsts, it's also her first time on Tim and Friends. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Penny Alexiak to the show. Penny, thank you so much for doing this. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? I am very well, thank you. What's it like to hear some media dude bring you on <laughs> and say the words, Canada's most decorated Olympian like ever. Has that sunk in yet? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's fully sunk in. Sorry, my dog is being loud over here. Yeah, but um, Bean. Bean. He's one of you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know. It, it's definitely weird, especially just thinking of myself as like regular 16-year-old Penny. It's It's very weird. No longer a regular 16-year-old Penny, though, like 21. I don't know. That's how I always kind of see myself is like I, I always say I see myself like I saw myself in grade nine. <laughs> I do the same, and it was with a lot more hair. Um, listen, I, I watched a bunch of interviews with you before doing this, and what struck me is kind of this, this balance of confidence and humility, which I think a lot of people like. But do you realize that with your accomplishments and your honesty, getting to those accomplishments that you've inspired a lot of folks uh i mean i hope i have i'm not i'm not out here like trying to every day inspire people as much as i would like to that's not my goal when i wake up but when i wake up i just try and be the best athlete best person i can be that day and see how i can better myself that day so if that's inspiring people and if i'm inspiring people to do things that they've never really thought of doing and then that that makes me really happy that's very cool collateral damage um <laughs> my, my favorite interview was poolside seventh medal and the four by 100 your teammates uh sharing that moment with you really cool and how proud they seem to be in your accomplishments what did it mean to you to share that with a team in what is sometimes a very individual sport yeah, I mean, I, I've always loved the team aspect of swimming. I think it can become such a like individual sport. And then just to be able to step up on those relays and race with girls that you train with and girls that you compete with in training is really cool. And just to be able to get a medal with those girls and see how far you've all come and see how hard that everyone has worked is always so inspiring to me and so motivating so i just love being able to get medals with the girls that i train with it's so fun that's awesome uh kylie mash dropping the spicy p nickname is is, is that <laughs> sticking is that something you wish wouldn't stick where, where is where are we on spicy p uh i was honestly thinking about that today i saw i saw a photo of pascal siakam and i was like oh i hope he doesn't hate me that was, <laughs> that was my only thought <laughs> Is Bean uh, a pug or is Bean a bulldog? What, I, I'm seeing like just a smidge of Bean right now. <laughs> this is Bean. He's a oh, nice. Frenchie Boston Terrier and he's very, very odd, very awkward. He, he's a good looking fella. And don't worry, I hosted a show from my basement and my dog, Snoop Dogg, uh, made several appearances on the show. So we're good with any dogs on this show. Um, <laughs> The other thing that struck me was you talking about how young this crew was and how like this is just a start like 2024 2028 and that you guys are on the come up and I grew up in a, in a hockey family kind of like you youngest of four and I loved all sports and I never understood 
um, why we as Canadians had this swagger around hockey, like nobody was ever going to beat us, and didn't take it over to other sports. And I feel like that's changing right now. Is that something you always had, something you noticed, something you wanted to bring? Where does that come from for you? Um, for me, I think it kind of just stems from how I was raised. Like I was always raised to be good at what I was doing. And if I was going to do something to do it properly and really work at it and be the best at it, if it was something that I love to do. So for me, it was just like how I was raised. My brother was the same. My sister's the exact same. And I think I've kind of tried to show that in my racing and show that I'm going to put it all out there all the time. And I think, like you said, kind of like more and more Canadians have been popping up on the scene in different sports. And I think it's just this confidence now that people have in Canada, just showing that we aren't just a hockey nation. We are a nation full of like such incredible athletes in every sport, pretty much. I feel like and I've said it a couple of times on the show over the last little while. I feel like Canadian women right now have come to kick ass and chew bubble gum and they're all out of bubble gum. <laughs> Like, it's just, it's unbelievable to see what was done in Tokyo. I know you were down in Flushing. Like, do you draw anything from athletes in other sports where you, you know, kind of clued into what the women's soccer team were doing or what Bianca or Layla is doing? Like, how much of that do you see in the periphery of what you're doing? I think for the most part, I kind of try to, like, stay away from looking at sports too much because just because that's like my everyday kind of thing. And especially right. after Tokyo, I've kind of taken a little bit of a break, but I did go to the U.S. Open and I saw Bianca play and I just saw her passion and her fire. And that was amazing to watch, especially in person. And I've been watching Layla a little bit and seeing like she's been insane this whole time. And I mean, it's just so fun to go out there and watch and see people accomplish great things and see the passion that they have for their sport that's like that brings out so much like motivation for me that's literally why i love sports like just yeah. and, and seeing people overcome the adversity that's thrown at them to do it and i mm -hmm. and i think about you guys and and that team and did the struggles of trying to train in a pandemic make it sweeter when the canadian team did as well as it did in tokyo uh, I think so. Yeah, I think I think it was really difficult for us to be out of the water for four months because that's totally unheard of in swimming. You only are out usually for two weeks of a whole year. So we were out for four months, came back and our coach kind of told us, like, you're pretty much at this point. You have a year to train for the Olympics and you have to get ready for it. And other people might have an advantage on you, but there's literally nothing you can do about it. You need to do the best with what we have. And I think we did that. We all went in every single day. Everyone worked really, really hard and pushed each other day in, day out, which was crazy. Like everyone, no one was slacking off the whole year. And um, just to go to the Olympics and our center, like from Ontario on the Canadian team, we brought home 15 medal medals on our own, which was insane. So it was really awesome to just kind of see that work and then see that payback at the end of the year. I know you took some time off from swimming in, back in 2018. How important looking back now was that for you? I definitely needed that. Um, I think that's something I kind of learned from 2016. I, I didn't take a break. I literally went back straight into school, straight into swimming, and I ended up getting very overwhelmed and not really enjoying it anymore. And I was like 17, 18, which is kind of scary to not be enjoying the sport that you love to do and you're good at. So I took that time off then and it just helped me really assess what I wanted to do and really find my love for swimming again. And then when we had those four months off when the pandemic first hit, that was the same kind of thing. It kind of, I was kind of hitting a wall in 2020 and then having that break to really just focus on myself and better myself and really figure out my passion for swimming again has been really good and then now I'm again taking another like month month and a half off and I'm trying to kind of do the same thing and I think I've learned that just from 2016 I need to like really let myself reset after a big thing. Without a doubt, like I've seen the, the pressure of expectations set a lot of great athletes back. In fact, I've seen it in my family 
Um, when you see someone like Simone Biles or, say, Naomi Osaka at, at Flushing at the U.S. Open, talk about needing a break. Like, have you ever thought about reaching out? Or do you have any advice, especially when you know how many people out there just don't understand what a high-level high athlete is going through? Yeah, I think that's something that definitely is, like, very prevalent in the athletics world right now, and it's actually pretty cool, I think, because um, it is a real thing. Like, athletes are held to such a high standard just because they're good at what they do, and to be so young and so good at what you do has a ton of pressure, and there's so many people watching, so I think it's great that these girls especially are talking out about how they need a break and how there is too much pressure on them. And they're actually admitting to that because that is how they can actually get past it themselves. So I think when people are really like tough on people for taking a break and everything, it's just, it's like they, no one really understands the kind of pressure that we all have. And it's more than just a few comments. It's mental and everything. Yeah. And it can be from the outside. It can be from the inside. Um, okay, let's let's move on from that because I, I understand expectations can be heavy, but with that pressure comes a little bit of privilege. Like, what's the coolest thing that you've been able to experience because of the privilege that comes with uh, being Canada's most decorated Olympian of all time? Like, what's the what's the one thing that is what's the one door that's open to you where you're like, damn, I never thought I'd be able to do this at 19, 20, or 21. Is there one thing that jumps out at you? I don't think there's one thing. I think, like, even after 2016, my whole world flipped upside down, and I've been living a totally different life than I would have been had I not done what I did in 2016. So for me, there's so many things. Like, I went to Kenya with my family and my best friend to build schools. So that's just, like, that's something we would have never done. We would have wanted to do, but couldn't, like, afford it or wouldn't be able to go. So I don't know. There's just so many so many things i can't even begin <laughs> well that's i mean listen building schools in kenya is a wonderful start for that answer uh so good on you what, what's next for penny alexiak what am i going to see splashed across the uh at typical pen ig feed well, for the next little while well holy cow i don't even know i'm i'm honestly i have a lot going on right now and i'm still figuring out a lot of things because i have been avoiding the world for the last month of <laughs> like Cabo and New York and Charlotte and everything. So I don't know. I'm, I'm starting things right now. So you're going to see a few things roll out, I think, soon. So a couple more trips just for you before we start those <laughs> new things? Hopefully, maybe. I, I kind of want to get out of Toronto again. <laughs> uh, if, it, if it was Cabo and New York for me, I would get out of Toronto too. Listen, <laughs> I really enjoyed this. I wish you the best of the luck on the rest of the come up and can't wait to see what's next. Uh, on behalf of the audience, thanks for doing this. No, thank you so much. Uh, there is Penny Alexiak, the most decorated athlete in the history of Olympics in this country.